guys. Today, we're gonna to be doing a rare how to do your pin video, in which I'm doing a factory review of the Vivi pins. So, let's get going. Hello everyone, I'm Never Dot. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a factory review of Vivi Pins. Vivi Pins makes enamel pins. Uh, a lot of you want to know who you should make your pins with. Often, you don't know. They're random manufacturers on the internet. Which one should you use? So today we're going to be doing a factory review. So we're going to check out the full process of using them, how to order them, how to produce them, and the final result. So I've just got this package from them full of pins that I've designed and sent off to them and they've very kindly sponsored this video so thank you to them and they provided some extra little bit of samples for me to show you guys so you can decide whether or not they are good for you. Let's go! Before we get into opening the box we're going to look at the digital process to prepare and create the files and how we ordered the pins. First step is to come up with an idea for a pin. Pin has to be sort of simple you can't have too many fine details in a pin otherwise it just becomes a stamp that you have to print in shellac or something so you want to keep it sort of simple it can have sort of complex design but you want to limit the number of colors because you're paying more for each additional color uh, and also bear in mind it can't have too small of a detail because these pins are relatively small and if you get too small detail on your drawing when they get shrunk down to about a centimeter or two you're gonna lose it because the metal won't be able to refine that area and the enamel color won't be able to fit. So definitely keep your blocks of color large enough so that it can actually get color and your line art uh, such that it can actually be rendered in metal. So for this pin, we're gonna do the turtle pins because I've never done the turtle pins and I really wanna get the cute turtles done. And if I do turtles sort of walking on all fours, I can flip it around on his back uh, so that when I'm having a bad day, I can be like, oh look, yeah. That's me. <laughs> so I'm doing the turtles in Krita. Uh, I'm going to draw them by hand uh, on my tablet. And so that gets done fairly quickly. I don't need to be too careful because I'm going to clean it up in Illustrator, pop it over there, trace it, uh, clean it up, delete the little hard edges and stuff, and also get it filled in with good colors. The colors have to be picked in Pantone. As you can see, I'm having a bit of trouble getting exactly the right green and also having a bit of trouble deciding on whether or not I want a green shell because I kind of like the look of these colored shells. I would really like to have rainbow shells. Now, the good thing about enamel pins and making those is that you're paying a lot for the mold. But once you get the mold done, you can do many more in other colors. Uh, so in future, I could run off a bunch more um, colored pins that are of different colors of turtle, and it really shouldn't cost me too much, as long as I don't try to ask them to make 10 pins of blue and 10 pins of red, because that's rather a small size. They typically would want 100 or 200 uh, of a particular color. So we're gonna put this in an Illustrator file with all the details, the Pantone codes uh, to be specific, and the sizing of the pin on the height and width, just to make that absolutely clear. And we also wanna make sure that we tell them which is the front and which is the back of the kitting card. Uh, in this one, I'm doing the cards, because uh, you know sometimes it's not obvious which is the front and which is the back, and I would hate to have them pin themselves all like 200 pins and they're backwards. That would not be great. Uh, so I've got my file all laid out perfectly. Uh, make sure to, if you have any fonts there, outline the fonts so that you're not sending embedded fonts because they may not embed and you might find out you get something different on the other end. Uh, so get those out and let's go through the website process. All right, we're going to start by going to vivipins.com, which is the one sponsoring this video. Uh, so we're going to make custom enamel pins through the website right now. So it's going to start with showing us the quantities and how much they cost for the quantities. Uh, typically the quantities will get cheaper as you make more, obviously. Uh, so you should definitely make a thousand. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> um, typically I would make 200 uh, on my initial run just to test the waters and see if that's if it looks good and also if there's a market for it. So if people actually want to buy it. Otherwise, if I get too many, you're just stuck with a huge box of pins that you can't move. Uh, so also, of course, the size of the pin is going to increase the cost, and later we'll see the number of colors. Now we've got to pick the type of pin. Uh, I'm going to do hard enamel pin because that gives me a more professional look. Uh, I really like that. Uh, I do like professionally made products, uh, but not to say that the other ones are not. Uh, so certainly soft enamel pins are by far the most popular. Uh, probably because you have that nice texturing of the pin. Uh, it is a bit softer, I think, and yeah, it just has a different look. Uh, offset printed is great for stuff where you need a sort of an image to be put on your pin uh, that won't work with metal, for instance. So if you want your colors directly against each other, you don't want a dividing line of metal dividing it, which you do need uh, with enamel, you're gonna have to do an, an offset printed color because 
Uh, that can put as many colors as you want because it's basically just printing something and then sticking it on a pin. So that's an option. Uh, 3D cast and die strike are also options and they don't have color obviously but they do kind of look neat. Uh, so not for me but you might want to consider it. The next part would be the size of the pin. The size of the pin just has to fit within that dimension so mine I measured my plan uh, is to print them about the size of a quarter. Uh, a good test is just to print it on paper, your pin, and just get a feel for it. You know, if you're wearing it, it's just ridiculously large or way too small. So that's a good way to, for you to test it without actually having to manufacture it with the printer. So make sure you get your size right. Also choose your colors because you want your colors to be my pin is three colors, so that's just keeping it to the least expense. Uh, the more color you add, the more expensive the pins will be, obviously. And so if you want to have a rainbow colored pin, well, that's going to add a bit of cost to each of the pins. Uh, it's not too bad though, to be honest. So don't limit yourself. The next thing is choosing the quality of the pin. I'm going to go with premium quality because I really want the best pin possible. But I don't know. I've never gotten standard quality pins before, so I don't know if they're terrible. Um, but I think they're just putting a little bit more time and effort into polishing them off. The metal you're choosing for the pins is pretty important because um, that has the look of the pin. It, that's the line color basically for your pins and the backing color. Uh, so this is the metal they're made of. The most common seem to be the gold, silver, and copper. So I've asked Vivi Pins to provide me with samples of those three colors so that I can show you guys and you guys will have a better feel for what might look good with your pins. Um, I've always used nickel plating actually with my other pins uh, with other manufacturers. So. I'm not used to these colors and we'll see what they look like. And um, these are actually going to be the metal. Uh, you can also see that there's many other choices of metal. So if your pin is going for a more antique look, uh, you've got a few choices in that range. If you want to do sort of old Victorian pins, you got it there. There's even a black metal. So that kind of looks cool. Might work better with certain colors because different colors will work better with different colored metal. Uh, not everything looks great with gold, for instance, and you might want a darker line uh, for some of your art if that's what you want to pop out. The next thing you're going to want to pick is the clutch, and the clutch is what holds the pin to you. So if you pick a bad clutch, well, don't do that. So you've got many options. You've got your standard butterfly clutch and a nicer looking deluxe clutch and a jewelry clutch. The magnetic clutch, which looks kind of cool, probably doesn't damage your shirt. The rubber clutch, very common, and the safety pin clutch, which, ooh, I don't want a safety pin clutch. I am afraid of stabbing myself and fiddling with those things is a pain in the neck. I can't do a, a safety pin clutch without looking at it directly. Don't like those. Um, I tend to go with the rubber clutch because it feels better on skin, uh, doesn't catch on sweaters, and it's just a bit more reliable in that sense. But uh, the deluxe clutch and jewelry clutch also fit the bill there. So you might want to consider those if you don't mind the added cost. Uh, the butterfly clutch I do have a concern with as far as catching on, you know, knitted materials so that can sometimes pick your clothes if you've got multiple layers of clothes maybe not always the best choice but that's up to you and you might have different experiences um, i do want to try the metal clutch magnetic clutch uh, sometime in the future because that looks kind of interesting uh, might be might be good there's a lot of options with vivi pins and customizing your pins so they got the standard sort of glitter which is great for unicorns butterflies rainbows and i don't know planets I was thinking about doing planetary rings, uh, just the ring part and then, or maybe the whole planet, either way. Um, I've often seen them used to good effect on Instagram. Uh, key change is just not a form factor if you don't want to do a pin. Remember that this is just metal and these people are molding metal for you and they could potentially do other form factors. Um, I would actually be curious if I could have like a keychain with like eight chains so I could do like an octopus thing something for the future. And that's the nice thing about connecting with the factory. You can ask them these weird, stupid questions. They might say no, but if they say yes, you're the only pin maker going to be making these weird pins. So cool. Uh, we've got font numbering great for collector's editions because obviously, you know, I want to know that I'm 97 of a hundred pins that were ever made and I paid a slight premium for that, but Hey, I got my 97th pin. That's special. Um, I'm going to be doing the pin back stamp because that identifies my company. I need people to know that my pins are from Neverdot and they're authentic and they helps them get back to the website. So if the, you know, you want to, if you found this pin, you got it as a gift. It's a great way to reconnect with the person who made it. So you can see that, Oh, they've got other pins and they might want to buy those from you. Uh, lastly, we've got gems. So if that makes sense for your design, go for it. After picking all those options, we just have to choose what kind of packaging we want our pins to come in. Uh, I'm typically going to go with kidding cards because that's the most standard thing. It's just simple. You just get a card, 
slap the pin in there and you get it in a little bag and that's all. Uh, but as you can see, they've got other options like a plastic box, a drawstring bag, a poly bag, and a velour box. Uh, those all sound very fancy. And I have asked uh, Vivi Pins to send me some samples of some of these things. So we're gonna have a look at those very soon. Last step is just to pick the file, upload it, add some notes explaining any kind of weird stuff that's in your file that they might need to know about. Uh, for me, I just explained that I had a backing stamp I wanted and also I need to know the dimensions of the kitten card because the kitten card dimensions are not specified on the website. Turns out that they can just do any size card and I didn't need to ask, but I'm always nervous that I'm not meeting the requirements of the manufacturer and really they should be meeting my requirements and they do. So I didn't have any problems there. Um, you also just pick how fast you want to receive the pins. So they offer some different timelines. And of course, if your show is coming up in two days, you're not going to have pins. But if you want it, you know, quickly, you just pay a little bit more. So if you want to save money, be a better planner. Don't be like me and try to get it done in a week or two because that generally doesn't work. So I'm picking the maximum time frame because I want to save money on shipping and I'm not really in a rush for this. So there we go, that's the order. So now we wait. Hey guys, so I sent the file off a day or so ago and now I've got a proof back. And the proof is the file that they send you. It's basically their understanding of what you want for the pin. Uh, so my first proof here, I see that the size is a little bit smaller, which probably means I gave them a file that was a bit bigger than I said I ordered in the thing, which was the size of a quarter. Uh, so they sized it down and for me that's okay i mean my baby turtle making a baby turtle smaller just makes it more cute so that was really was not a big deal for me uh, for this pin if it was a different pin like my other sets are fairly specific in their sizing so i would say no put it back to the original size and that would be no big deal either it might incur a different costing but whatever so I also noticed that uh, the color uh, of the metal on one of them was not what I had picked in the order. So I just got back to them that, hey, this is a little bit different than what I asked for. So, and they changed it, no problem. Uh, also, they got the back stamp graphic wrong. <laughs> so in my file, I had included it, but it was like off to the side and maybe they thought my logo was what, they, what I would want because uh, they sort of picked what I logically would want. But what I logically would want is, of course, the illogical choice. So I just clarified that that's no, that's not the back stamp. I gave them a new file, which made it just more clear. Like here it is. Uh, this is the exact back stamp graphic vector stuff that you should use. And they added that in and it was all fine. So I got back another proof with the updated graphics and with the correct metal, everything looked good. And I said, yep, that's it. You're good to go. So definitely you guys make sure you do check the proofs because don't assume that the factory is going to get it right. I think Every time I've ordered pins, and I've done it like three, four times now, um, there's always been minor corrections that I needed to do. And that's not really a negative on the factory side. They're just getting a lot of orders and they're making the best assumptions about what you want. And maybe what you were asking for wasn't 100% clear. So just make sure that the colors they've identified are exactly what you sent. Doesn't matter if you specified the colors in the file, just make sure that they're exactly the same. Make sure the metal choices are the same as what you asked for and the sizing is the same. And also just be on the lookout for the graphic itself having changed in any way, uh, because sometimes they do need to adjust it a little bit because you might have two pieces that are fairly close together with a hole and maybe they can't manage that without getting out their tools and digging through it. Uh, so you might not want to do that and you might want to adjust your graphic actually and send it back an update. Uh, so that's something you'll work back and forth with their art team on. And it's a collaborative process. So this worked really well for me. Uh, I had a contact with the company and they were just very quick back and forth. Um, I think they're working in a different time zone, of course, being in China. Uh, so that can be effective actually, because you can have time to do your work, send it off the next day. They've got their response and an updated proof. Uh, so I've sent the proof off. Now we just got to wait for the pins to be made. All right, now we're at the point where we get to open that box. And it did arrive on time, uh, July something something, that I had ordered. Uh, I was impressed actually. So let's open it now. All right, so this is the box and let's just try to get into it. Uh, gosh, that's a lot of tape.
let's open it up. So we've got, ooh, all right. These are the baby turtle enamel pins. So you can see here, uh, these ones look like probably the gold ones. Um, I requested them to make some different types uh, of pins. So we've got them. These are in the bags. Uh, we've got a bunch in sort of plastic Ziploc bags, which is nice. Uh, a different format if you want to order them that way. And then we've got whoop, a bunch more in copper. And a bunch more in silver. Some extra cards so I can put them all consistently on the same packaging later. Uh, these are the cards and the bags that would go with them. We've also got some of these nice boxes, uh, different formats of pin. We've got silver, copper, and gold. And we've also got these very cool looking velour boxes. So prop, let's see. Ooh, very, very nice. These pins look great. I uh, really love how they turned out and all the different packaging options we are gonna have a look at right now. The kidding cards is the most common thing I would typically use and what you often see on Instagram. So you just have a card, you design it yourself and then they put it together for you and they get it in the bags and you don't really have to do anything. It saves you a lot of time. An alternative form factor is this plastic box. So the plastic box is just a transparent box. It's really nice because it shows off the pin uh, even when closed and inside you've just got a nice little foam insert that it is pinned to. Uh, it looks really professional actually. I quite like it. I might consider doing this uh, for instance if I were to do a line of cute sort of um, mineral people uh, pin set, this would be ideal because it looks like a sample case out of geology thing. Um, if you guys want to do that, please feel free and then tell me in the comments because I probably want to buy it. So, you know, little periodic table pin set. Somebody do that. That is a good idea. Um, also, maybe butterflies and stuff like that because it looks like, again, scientific collector's cases or something like that. So I really like this. Uh, opens, closes really nice. It feels good. It looks really professional and it's just a nice alternative form factor for your packaging. The ritziest packaging that they've provided to us is, of course, the velour case. Will you marry me? So, obviously this is not a ring, but it is exactly the same deal. So if you want to propose to someone with a pin that you jam through their shirt, this is the way to go. Uh, so this is a very fancy method of presenting your pins. Uh, may not be appropriate for all pin types. Uh, my pin type, I think it's a little bit overkill, but if you're going for more of a love-oriented pin or something else a bit more professional, and you're not just going for the cutesy Instagram style stuff, but you want to present it in a more formal fashion, uh, maybe it's targeting, I don't know, a different type of audience that would be more expecting this kind of thing, you've got that option, and this looks great. The last packaging option is the plastic bag. So plastic bag is just a little tiny Ziploc bag with the pin thrown in it and that's all. You might wonder, that's terrible. Why would you ever want to do that? Well, admittedly, this is the cheapest option. It doesn't cost anything extra, but it doesn't come with any heavy packaging, doesn't come with any kind of branding, seems to be the worst choice. But this is a good option if you're doing a lot of pins you're not trying to spread your brand or message, and you're really just trying to provide pins for like an event, fundraisers, or something else where they don't need to know who you are. They just need to show that they support cancer or don't support cancer, you know, <laughs> or they're just, you know, wearing a flag pin or something like that, where it's not really your IP, for instance. Um, you just want to get those pins out there. This is really good because you're not throwing away all that packaging that's costing you extra, and you don't need to spread any brand message, so you don't need the card. You just need the pin. So really good if you're just trying to do a lot of these, you're just giving them out, something like that. I recommend that for that case. All right, now let's look at the metal choices. Vivipins has been very kind in providing a set of three different metals for us. And we've got gold, which is very nice looking. You can see here that it's sort of, it's, it's definitely actually got some real gold in it and it shines really nicely on this pin. And we've also got silver, another good option. It has a different look. You can see here that it's more of a standard look, I think. Uh, it's more typical what I would use for like the nickel. So 
I do like this quite a lot. And lastly, we've got the copper. And the copper is sort of that third medal uh, if you're winning at the Olympics. And nothing to do with lower quality. You can see it looks really good. It has this sort of orangey kind of look. It looks really good. And it would probably complement the color palette of certain kinds of pins. So again, you'd want to choose a metal color that matches sort of your palette of choices, that complements it, that doesn't contrast weirdly with it. Um, for instance, I wouldn't use gold necessarily if I just had a I don't know, a particularly dark or like a blue uh, pin that just, it would clash with. It wouldn't look good with that. Um, but other kinds of pins it looks amazing with. So like a, like a white unicorn would look great with gold. Uh, might not look so good with a, like a black antique metal or something like that. Um, but that is for you to decide and maybe experiment with because once you've got these molds made, for the factory it doesn't really cost too much different between the metals. The metal itself costs a little bit different so you might have a bit to think about there. but. It's really not that much um, and it just does give you a different look uh, so you might want to try different metals uh, for different types of pins and these are your options we've got these three here that you can look at there they are with different light effects and whatnot uh, the light really n looks nice on these hard enamel pins another important aspect is let's look at the back stamp so how did that turn out so we've got it here and you do actually have to shine the light on the back stamps to see, sort of get it more clear, uh, the logo, the lettering. And I, I think it turned out right, really well. Uh, it's pretty clear, I can read never dot there. And that's really the goal for me, because I want them to be able to get back to my website if they don't know where this pin came from. Uh, so it turned out really well. And it's not meant to be visible while you're wearing the pin, of course, and it's really small, but you know, it's got a fit on the back and it serves its purpose. Uh, so I consider that quite important if you have a company, if you have a name you want to be pushing and people to get to know, yeah, do that. Put a back stamp on it. Um, I've used the rubber clutch here, you can see. I really like it because the rubber clutch, again, um, maybe it doesn't hold on to the pin the best. So if you do just not want to lose it, there are certain types of clutches that are sort of secure and will not release as easily. But those are a bit more expensive and the average person doesn't really want to pay for that. So. Um, I offer the rubber pins just to reduce costs for them and also not everybody needs it. And they can also purchase those more secure back clutches separately with any pin. So would I use Vivi pins again to make more pins compared to my other manufacturer? Yeah. This is another pin that I made with some other middleman, don't know the factory, uh, but you can see that they're about the same thickness, same metal quality and everything like that. Uh, back stamp, same, even the rubber Thing. well these are mass manufactured they're going to be the same of course um, but Vivi pins did an excellent job they compare really well to other companies and yeah I would if these sell really well I'm going to make more colors of turtle shell because I really really liked when I was going through the samples I really liked the purple and the blue and the red and all the different colors of shells I, I really like colors so um, there's a there's a chance that I might make more turtle shells with Vivi pins and I, I appreciate them sponsoring this video. Thank you for that. Thank you for the opportunity to review a factory and for you guys out there to get the opportunity to see what a specific factory can do. So this is Vivi pins. If you want to give them a look, there's a link in the description below, vivipins.com. Uh, so thank you Vivipins for this and thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you appreciate the detail and thanks to Vivipins for providing, providing all those samples uh, that we got to look at, the velour and the boxes and all that. Um, it's great to have those options and great way to distinguish yourself uh, from your competitors. So until next time, see ya! Special thanks to Vivipins for sponsoring this video and giving us this, the opportunity to have a hands-on or eyes-on uh, of some of the options that they can do. You don't often get that opportunity to just see what it is that you can possibly get. So thank you to them for that. And thank you guys for watching the video. Please um, like and subscribe and all that. I uh, really appreciate your support and it's because of you that I'm doing these things. So thank you. See you next time.